Welcome back. I'm Dr. Angela Siegel from Dalhousie University, and today we're going to start covering decisions. The goals of this module will be to be able to implement decisions using the if statement, to compare integers, floating point numbers, and strings, and to write statements using the Boolean data type. In this video, we'll start by looking at how we can implement decisions using the if statement. If you're following along in our book, Big Java Late Objects, you'll see that we've started upon section 3.1. So we start with the if statement, and we're going to use it to help us use the computer to make decisions. Making decisions is a primary task of computers. Computers make decisions based on information that they have available, user input, data, calculations that they undertake, and just various circumstances. Generally, we first start these decisions by evaluating a condition. A Boolean condition is a statement that evaluates to either true or false. So we're going to make use of these Boolean conditions. We're going to decide if something is true or false. Is your age greater than 20 or less than 20? If we ask, is your age greater than 20, that's either true or false. Um, there's no middle ground. And so that's an example of a Boolean condition. So we'll first evaluate the Boolean condition. We'll decide if it's true or false. If it's true, we'll do one thing. We'll follow that true branch. If it's false, we'll do something else. For example, if we have some integer x, we can decide if x is greater than or equal to zero. If it's greater than or equal to zero, say the number one, then we follow the true branch and we'd return that x is positive. If it's not greater than or equal to zero, for instance, if x were negative one, we'd follow the false branch and we'd find out that x is negative. We can apply Boolean conditions to almost everything. For instance, if we wanted to use the computer to look at grades, we know that your grades have a grade scale. For instance, an A plus could be within the range 90 to 100, an A 85 to 89, and so on. If we wanted a computer to evaluate which grade you should receive based on this grade scale, we could we would take your score and we would then evaluate certain conditions. If the score is greater than or equal to 90, then we would want to return an A+. Plus. And we'd, follow, we'd do a check on the Boolean condition score greater than or equal to 90, something that evaluates to either true or false. And based on whether or not that condition is met, we make a different decision. So if it is true that your score is at or above 90, then you should get an A+. Plus. If not, we'll carry on checking. If the score is greater than or equal to 85, it's an A. If not, we carry on down the line. The if statement allows a program to carry out different actions depending on a specific condition. And so that condition is what we define by the Boolean condition. So getting that piece right is what really starts us off onto the best path. There are two key words in the if statement. If and else. And we'll see that those statements that follow the if keyword uh, guide us towards the true branch, and those that follow else lead us on the false branch. So it looks a bit like this. Here's our syntax. We have if and then some Boolean condition, and that condition is, is um, one that evaluates to true and false, as we've seen. And any of the statements that follow this are the true branch of our code block. It's a code block that makes up our true branch. So what we do if that condition is true. Everything that follows the else is what we do if the condition was false. If we have one branch, it looks something like this. If the if, and something that we can check now, time less than 1200. So if it's before noon and 24 hour time, we drink coffee. Um, 
And there's no else. So you see there's no false branch of this code block because uh, it doesn't apply. We were just checking if it was before noon, midday, and if so, we wanted to drink some coffee. If there are two branches, so if there's something we do when the condition is true and there's an alternative option if, if the condition is false, then we can apply the if-else combination. So we have the if statement followed by a Boolean condition, age greater than 18. In this case, we would serve a wine menu. Otherwise, we end up on this false branch after the else statement. So we have after the else, we're going to serve the pop menu. So if you have something that happens when a condition is true, and an alternative that happens when that condition is false, you're going to require both an if and an else branch. Here are some suggestions that we have to make your code a little bit easier to look at. So first of all, we suggest that you line up your brackets. So we note that the true branch and false branch of these code um, of an if statement can have a code block, so something that is more than one line long. Because that's the case, we're going to open the code block with a, an opening squiggly bracket, and we're going to close it with a closing squiggly bracket. It's best if these are lined up. It's, it is also common for people to save lines and not align them. If you choose to do this, which is also fine, um, we suggest that the closing bracket at least lines up with that if. Um, and the reason for both of these suggestions is that it's much easier to tell that you have the, the proper opening and closing braces if the, you have that alignment. You can quickly look through and make sure that you have an opening matching a closing. If you don't, it's very hard to figure out where you've gone wrong if what you're missing is a bracket. And to that end, always use brackets. Although a single statement um, doesn't require the use of brackets, meaning if you, if you just wanted to do one thing after your if statement, you don't need to have brackets. And so sometimes you'll see people do this, but this is dangerous because it's really tempting to add in another statement. That, that becomes dangerous because you might have it uh, tabbed over in alignment, and you think that it's all working fine, but only that first statement will run. And so always, if you're using um, an if statement, open up the code block with a squiggly brace, even if there's only one single clause that will be held within it. Another common error is the inclusion of a semicolon. We've really hit hard on the fact that you need semicolons in Java and missing those causes problems. It turns out that adding semicolons where they don't need to exist also causes problems. If we added this red semicolon at the end, what happens is it ends. <laughs> so we check if your birthday is today, and then it evaluates the next statement that it receives. And because the next statement isn't an opening bracket, which says you're going to run a full code block, uh, it thinks it's done everything it needs to. That semicolon tells the compiler that I've reached the end of what I need to accomplish, and it stops. Um, and so for that reason, this can cause real problems, unexpected problems. This semicolon changes everything. Everything in the curly brackets will always run because that if statement is over the moment it evaluates the first expression, which in this case ends at that semicolon. So that's it. The introduction to the if statement. We'll talk next about relationships and how do we come up with these Boolean conditions in the first place. Thanks for watching. How does this video compare to the others? You know, I don't really know, but I do know how to compare some other things like numbers and strings. I learned how to compare numbers at school, but never strings. Why don't we take a look at that in our next video, where we learn how to compare integers, floating point numbers, and strings as we carry on with decisions. See you next time.